drive an 89 Cherokee. Well, she's an 89, but she's got the motor of a 96, which can make it a little confusing the first time you have to change out the ignition coil. Does the coil go with the 89 or the 96? But that's me. I drive them, but I'm not that much of fixing them. Jeep of song, Jeep of songs, will you get us across the finish line? Actually, it turns out it's a boy Jeep. My wife named him Handsome when we bought him back in 2006, but it somehow works better as female when I want to use that line. So she's an 89 with the motor of a 96, which we had put in just after we threw a rod just north of Kelowna 10 years ago. Jeep of song, Jeep of song, will you get us across the finish line? Across the finish line. Mm -hmm. Jeep of song, Jeep of song, will you get us across the finish line? We've driven that Jeep just about everywhere. We're living in Carmine now, just outside Beaverdale. And we've really only got one last request to make of that beautiful old Cherokee. Yeah. Get us across the finish line. Driving down to the general store, along the way there's a little traffic. can't tell their cars apart. Anything after the year 2000 all looks the same to me. Driving down to the general store. Someone waves at me. And 
by the time I get my head on my ass trying to figure out who it was, they'd gone by, I didn't wave back. Now I don't like to piss people off, or upset or confuse them. It might have been someone I know, someone who knows me. It might just be someone who knows my vehicle, or it might be a total stranger passing through and just wanting to be polite. But I didn't wave. It makes me feel like shit, and I don't like feeling like shit. So it gives me a problem. Because I'm too distracted in this life to try to memorize all the different makes and models of cars and what faces go with which car. from now on when someone waves at me or even if they don't wave but maybe they meant to and it might be someone I know or who knows me or my vehicle or it might be a total stranger whoever it is I don't want to piss them off feel confused or upset, and I don't want to feel like shit, so from now on I figure I'll just wave at everybody. Thank you. 
Ten times a week how good looking she is She doesn't believe that she's good looking But she thanks me anyway She still drives me crazy My wife's kind of a joiner. Since we moved here a few years ago, she's joined the art club, the gardening club, Tai Chi, the witches dance at Halloween. And she's created the archery club with a good friend of hers and she attends the community hall meetings every month. One of her closest friends, the one she started archery with, once said to her something which I'll repeat here verbatim and I give it first because I think maybe it's lesson number one in these parts. We look after our own. Lesson number two, I'll give verbatim as well, because people around here seem to have a pretty succinct way of expressing themselves. It comes from a Facebook exchange and I can't recall who posted it, but it's in response to a comment someone made regarding what sounded like a fairly large explosion just across the river from us. The quote read, if you're going to call the RCMP every time something goes boom in Beaverdale, you're living in the wrong place. Turned out to be someone shooting a tannerite off their back deck. took it to me. Call him when you need him. Just make sure you need him first. I can tell that's all you need to learn in order to get along here is those two lessons. There is a third thing, call it a lesson if you like, or just consider it good advice wherever you find yourself living and you want to get along with the locals. It goes like this. Don't be an asshole.
old Carmine on the West Kettle River in the pine woods on the Okanagan Highlands. Old Carmine, you came to our rescue, me and my darling, when we needed a home. In 1896, a man named James Dale had a mine not a hundred yards from where this old house still stands. He named it the Carmi Mine after his hometown of Carmi, Illinois, and this little town grew up around that mine. Old Carmi, on the West Kettle River, in the pine woods, on the Okanagan Highlands. Old Carmi, you came to our rescue. Me and my darling, when we needed a home. James Dale himself was, even at one time, postmaster of this little town. And what is now our house was uh, once the postal outlet and also a general store. Old Carmine on the West Kettle River. In the pine woods, on the Okanagan Highlands, old Carmine, you came to our rescue, me and my darling, when we needed a home. In October, I think, of 1906, James Dale's nephew, also named James Dale, shot a couple of guys after an argument over dinner at the boarding house. He was tried in Greenwood, found guilty, taken to Kamloops and hanged. Old Carmine, on the West Kettle River, in the pine woods, on the Okanagan Highlands. Old Carmine, you came to our rescue, me and my darling, when we needed a home. The fact that our street, Dale Avenue, was named after James Dale, the mining man, postmaster would seem pretty much self-evident. I wonder what that argument was about. Old Carmi on the West Kettle River in the pine woods on the Okanagan Highlands. Old Carmi came to our rescue me and my darling when we needed a home. wife says, you're an old Carmine now, boss. spend our summer then we spend the winter making a list of all the things we need to do next summer to get ready for winter we're going into our fifth winter in Carmine Carmine winters are harsher than Grand Forks winters we used to live in Grand Forks. A whole nother story. Anyway, winter can be a cozy time up here in Carmi, but it's in winter that you find out what has to be done to make your house a little or a lot cozier. Next winter. It flooded inside because of leaks in the roof. 
So last summer one day I was up on the roof of the fifth wheel sealing the leaks and a friend pulled up and got out of his car and said, what are you doing? I said, the usual. He said, ah, uh, getting ready for winter. This summer, let's see, we're insulating the crawl space and sealing up drafts in the floorboards. It's a 110 year old house. Then we're insulating around electrical outlets, opening a hole in the wall so warm air can get up the pipes under the stairs. And we're buying a little wood burner for one corner of the kitchen, even though we've got propane heat in the living room. And then we'll spend the rest of the summer and fall collecting firewood in the bush when we're out walking the dogs, all in aid of. Getting ready for winter. That's how we spend our summer. Then we spend the winter making a list of all the things we have to do next summer to get ready for winter. There's a local bikers club that we've been told looks after about 75% of the law enforcement around here. RCMP looks after the other 25% as needed. Apparently you don't want to get on this biker club's bad side, but if you stay on their good side, then they'll be on your side. A story about a friend of mine, a good friend of mine, known her for many years. I guess she went into teaching and at one point she was the principal at the little elementary school in Beaverdale. My wife and I ran into her recently at the grocery store and I told her this story and asked her if it's true. She smiled and said yes. Well, as the story goes, one day after work she was sitting with some friends talking about how she'd like to raise some funds to make some improvements in the children's playground. Someone asked her how much she needed, and she said uh, maybe $10,000 would get the job done. Yeah. Well, 
the next day she came to work and on her desk she found a paper bag containing $10,000 in cash. Well, it was the local bikers, see? Their kids went to that school. Yeah. One day, a couple summers ago, my ex, we were married and divorced back in the 70s, but still always been best of friends. One day she said, I've never had a mint julep. And I realized I'd never had a mint julep. And then my wife said, I've never had a mint julep either. We've got mint growing all around our house. So we decided to mix up a pitcher of mint julep. So here's the scene. Us old folks sitting in rocking chairs on the front gallery in the slanting sun late on a summer afternoon, chatting away over a mint julep. Grandson strumming on my old guitar. And our daughter, giving all us old folks Haircuts. Haircuts. so damn pleasant, we decided to do the same thing again this year, but with mojitos. My hair hasn't been this short since the spring of 1969. Thank you. 